back to my channel 5 Minute Economics where I teach economic concepts in a span of just 5 minutes. The topic for today is the quantity theory of money, Fisher's approach. And in this particular video, I'll be covering the Fisher's equation, the assumptions, diagrams, the background, as well as the criticisms. In short, all you need to know about this also simple theory. So yeah, let's get started. Also guys, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel in case you haven't already. It will mean a lot to me. Thank you. So guys, before we begin, let me give you a little background of this theory. So this theory dates back to 16th century where it was observed then that when money was flowing from America to Europe, the prices in Europe started to increase because the money supply in Europe increased. So it dates back to that time. Whereas this theory was brought up by Irving Fisher in the year 1911 where he spoke about it in his book Purchasing Power of Money. What did Irving Fisher observed? He said, this, as the quantity of money in an economy increases, the price aka the inflation tends to rise. Please remember Irene Fisher is a monetarist economist and he has brought out this concept very strongly where he said that one important factor which is responsible for inflation is the uh, rise in the money supply in the economy. He also said that at that time the value of money starts to fall when the money supply increases. Through these two uh, you know, statements, we can say that there is a direct relationship between money supply and price. As money supply increases, price also increases. Whereas there is an indirect relationship between money supply and value of money. The value of money keeps falling. So initially a good, maybe we can say a bunch of bananas which were available for 10 rupees is now costing us 20 rupees. So when the price rises, you know the value has fallen the value of money has fallen so this these two things were said and he also said this is uh, observed in cetris paribus that is other things remaining constant so guys this is the equation mv is equal to pt which we will be studying further in detail but before that let me just quickly run through the assumptions of the theory so number one velocity which is v over here remains constant number two volume of transactions remain constant which is t over here Economy is at full employment. It means everyone is fully employed. Next, price is a passive factor. It means that price cannot change automatically. It can change due to changes in some other factors like change in money supply. Next, this is a long run theory. And lastly, which is the most important assumption is that money is used only as a medium of exchange. That is, we you know, know the functions of money, store of value and all of that have been overlooked. Money is only looked as a medium of exchange. That is, We've seen only the transaction demand of money. So now guys, please pay attention because now we'll be doing the crux of this theory. So whenever guys, we study the quantity theory of money, Fisher's approach, this particular equation, mv is equal to p is some, pt, is something what you need to remember always. So what does each variable over here stand for? So m stands for money supply. Just now money, you know, money in circulation is our money supply, whereas v is our velocity of money. So what is basically velocity of money? Velocity of money is basically the number of times money exchanges hands in an economy. For example, a 100 rupee note. So 100 rupee note, we give it to someone, then they go and buy something, they give it to someone, and then they further go and you know, buy that uh, from that 100 rupee note. So number of times that 100 rupee note goes in circulation, that frequency is known as velocity of money. P stands for the average price level pertaining in the economy, whereas T stands for the volume of transactions which occur in an economy. So what does Fisher say from his equation? He says, now let us just consider the left hand side first, which is the supply side. So he says when we multiply M into V, that is the total money supply, that is money supply into our velocity of money. Okay, number of times that money supply has moved. So we get the total money supply in an economy. For example, here we've considered M as 100 and V velocity as 4. We get 400 as our MV. Whereas coming to the right hand side of the equation, which is PT, what over here we say is that P stands for price right? And T stands for volume of transactions. So when the price is multiplied by the volume of transactions, we get PT. So we get basically what the total money demanded for transaction purposes. For example, we buy a phone cover, we've kept the price as 200 and it's bought twice. So you know the T is 2 over here. Again, if we multiply P into T, we get 400. So in this case, what we notice is that MV is equal to PT. What did Fisher say? Fisher said that when V and T, we've assumed these to be constants. Remember in the assumptions we study, when V and T are constant in an economy, then it is 
true that when money supply increases price tends to increase in fact he called this as a truism that is a truth or a fact it's he called it this as an identity he said this is definitely true you can just think logically jab money paisa economy mein badhega price is bound to rise and of course then value of money will bound to fall so this is the relation which you have to remember it is a fact and it is a true what fisher had told us so now guys i've just drawn two very simple graphs for your explanation and you might need to draw it if uh, required in an exam so basically here we've shown the relationship between price and money supply graphically we studied that both hold a direct relationship so when we notice initially we are at om and op okay or x axis pe we have money supply y axis we have price so we notice when money supply increases from om to om dash our price also rises from op to op dash and similarly vice versa when money supply falls our price also falls thus our relationship is a direct relationship giving us a you know straight line um, curve whereas on the other hand we have price and value of money which obviously have an inverse relationship with each other we notice over here initially we are at ovm which is the value of money i have taken it as vm and op price but we notice when the price rises from op to op dash or op double dash i can say a value of money falls from ovm to ovm double dash you know value of money is falling and similarly when the price falls a value of money rises thus giving us a negatively inclined curve so this is just a simple uh, you know graphical explanation of the uh, theory so lastly guys i would like to conclude the video with some criticisms so in economics i've always taught you that criticisms are very much derived from assumptions so over here v and t which were considered to be constant it was heavily criticized by the keynesian economists that v and t cannot be constants you know when population increases v is tending to increase obviously zyada log honge zyada paisa circulation mein rahega when natural resources or technological developments happen then t cannot be constant next full employment is a very rare phenomena and it is not possible they've also neglected interest rate over here so whenever you know we are talking about money supply and price interest rate is bound to come but here they've totally neglected that role of interest rate then only applicable in the long run too much emphasis on money supply has been given and lastly and most importantly as i said money is only looked as a medium of exchange they've uh, you know ignored the other functions of money like store of value and you know speculative demand of money all that has been ignored so this is what that this theory is all about guys i hope this video was useful for you please do like my video and subscribe to my channel and i hope to see you in the next video pretty soon